Entergy provides much more than power. We support science and engineering at local schools to build a brighter path to better jobs and help prepare the next generation. Because together, we power life. Entergy. Additional support provided by the Fred B. and Ruth B. Ziegler Foundation and the Ziegler Art Museum located in Jennings City Hall. The museum focuses on emerging Louisiana artists and is an historical and cultural center for Southwest Louisiana. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting with support from viewers like you. strategy is often to attack uh, somebody and try and peel votes off of them. No love lost as the governor's race gets personal. They understood that if there was going to be family life, that political life and family life could not be separated. Remembering the daughter of Louisiana political legends, trailblazing journalist Koki Roberts. How much legitimately can an insurance commissioner do to drive rates up or down? The race to be Louisiana's next insurance commissioner heats up. Hi, I'm Natasha Williams. And I'm Andre Morrow. Much more on those top stories in a moment on this week's edition of SWI. But first, the remnants of Tropical Storm Imelda causing flooding from Houston to extreme southwest Louisiana and travel problems as it moves out of the area, rain topping some 40 inches in some places. I-10 is closed at the Louisiana border heading into Texas due partly to this. Some barges breaking free, slamming into the pilings along I-10 closer to Houston. Now we'll look at some headlines making news across Louisiana. The state this week received good marks from Moody's investors for its improved financial outlook and work to stabilize its budget. Moody's did not upgrade the state's credit rating, but did change the credit outlook from stable to positive. The firm says it means Louisiana could see a rating upgrade in a year or two. Credit ratings help decide interest rates charged to borrow money to finance road and construction projects. A $1 million federal science grant awarded to LSU and EBR Parish schools will soon help middle and high school students create new computer courses. The new public school courses will be developed and rolled out over the next five years. The National Science Foundation awarded the grant last week. A 12-year-old boy is the second student in Calcasieu Parish to be arrested on suspicion of threatening to shoot up a school. The boy, arrested this week, allegedly threatened an attack on Moss Bluff Middle School. Last week, authorities arrested a 15-year-old boy on suspicion of threatening to shoot people at Sam Houston High School. The two schools are located less than a mile apart in Moss Bluff. A school fire caused faculty and students to hold classes online beginning this week at Southern University. The fire on Southern's Baton Rouge campus is closing its nursing school building for at least a week. The fire erupted on the second floor of the building and sprinklers extinguished it. No one was inside. No injuries were reported. The Coast Guard says it rescued a man after his plane crashed in the Gulf of Mexico about eight miles from Southwest Pass. Crews received an alert from an emergency transmitter before noon Sunday and pulled 65-year-old Robert Hodges from the water about an hour later. He was wearing a life vest and his emergency locator told of his approximate location. The Coast Guard says a Southwest Airlines flight in the area relayed the Mayday call to air traffic controllers. Well, this week we saw the first of three gubernatorial debates ahead of the October 12th primary, and we also watched attacks that stayed within party lines. I talked with two of the state's top political reporters about the race for governor. Melinda Delott from the Associated Press, Greg Hilburn from USA Today Network, thanks for being here. The race for governor has perhaps heated up the gloves maybe off a bit with some of the GOP infighting. Let's talk about that right off the bat. Uh, Eddie Rispone, his campaign attack of Ralph Abraham. Strategy there, Melinda. 
Well, I mean, Eddie Rispone currently is running in third place in almost any poll that you can see. I don't think I've seen one where he's been in second place, honestly. Mm -hmm. And um, so if you're in third place and you're trying to make a runoff, you have to leapfrog the person in second place to get there. And, you know, I guess from the Rispone campaign's perspective, what they'll say officially is, you know, we we are running an attack ad on Ralph Abraham, but we're also running one on John Bell Edwards. And all we're doing is using information to distinguish our candidate from the other two candidates he's competing with in the primary, which, you know, obviously that's an argument to be made. But but it also is is sort of at this point where he, where else is he going to go? I mean, he ever he's been running ads. He spent millions of dollars on this campaign of his own money so far. Sure. And he's still in third place. So at this point of a of any campaign, usually the strategy is often to attack uh, somebody and try and peel votes off of them. Greg, yeah, well, the man has spent eleven, or he's invested eleven and a half million of his own fortune. He can't beat the governor until he beats Abraham, and uh, so of course he's 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 willing to put his money where his mouth is. And it's no surprise in the, the Republican Party statewide would say, "Oh, this is not what we want. This only puts votes." in the governor's corner. There has been uh, some backlash to that. Mm -hmm. Melinda and I both have, have written about in the stories and there seems to, it seems to have maybe unlocked some key Republican endorsements in Abraham's favor. Sure. Those, those who were standing on the sideline uh, may now line up to support him because of this. Uh, mm -hmm. The first one was uh, Katie Anna Congressman Clay Higgins. Um, there's there's others through the rest of this week. I think you'll see you'll, you'll see come about as well. Do you see that having an impact ultimately? Greg and I have talked about this before. Well, yeah, we, we talked about it yesterday. Yeah. Um, I, you know, some endorsements clearly matter. I mean, if, for example, if President Trump wanted to, to come and get involved in the Louisiana governor's race and endorse a Republican, that would matter. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think it's a little questionable how much endorsements really sway an electorate. Um, it, it, unless it's a really important person who is a surprise. You know, when, when Governor Edwards had uh, Republicans who came out and announced for him, you know, maybe those Republican endorsements, this is in 2015, maybe those Republican endorsements helped other Republicans feel comfortable that they could vote for a Democrat, for example. But generally speaking, I, I'm not sure that a lot of endorsements move the needle very much. I don't think endorsements generally move votes but in this case, it could move money. It could mm -hmm. incur, and, and that's what Congressman Abraham needs more than anything because right. he is, uh, he has spent not nearly the amount of money that Mr. Rispone has, and right now he doesn't have much left in the bank. So right. he needs money. We're heading into uh, the debates, and uh, uh, there will be a debate you can watch right here live on LPB um, next Thursday. As a matter of fact, so how do the changes in the way some of the ads are going now, uh, if they are changes, how does that impact the debates or does it? I think it, 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 it does it actually add color to, to it? It could add color flavor. to it. It could, if, if Mr. Rispone um, kind of presses his, presses this, this, this attack to, uh, publicly in a debate arena against Congressman Abraham, it makes for a more lively debate. Now they'll both, you can be assured, will attack Governor Edwards, the only Democrat the governor in the deep south. Right. And with that in mind, of course, Edwards continues to lead by a wide margin, according to the various polls. But do you see the polls shifting or changing as we come down to the final final gun here, the final weeks? I mean, I think that now that people are starting to pay attention, I think you probably see voters paying a little bit more attention now that we've moved past Labor Day. And it's taken a little while, hasn't right. it? Right. <laughs> well, people and, to really know, the, notice there's a race. The race has gotten a little more interesting. And you will see more advertising, obviously, um, on TV. And you'll hear more advertising on radio. So all of that can move um, can move where people are standing in the polls. And, and obviously, for uh, Governor Edwards, he is trying desperately to win outright in the primary because right. the dynamics of the race change if he is in a head-to-head -head matchup against a Republican as opposed to a three-person or really a six-person field um, like he is now. So so that's what he's sort of banking on the whole time is trying to, to win outright. And, and polls show that all over the map in terms of whether that's possible. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, final thoughts? Well, uh, I think you can see now that people are paying attention that the race has become uh, more colorful, more fractious, and more interesting. 
as we get down to the final weeks before it all happens. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. And here's a reminder, everyone, to watch the 2019 Governor's Debate, the one live on LPB next Thursday night, September 26th at 7 o'clock. That's from the campus of UL Lafayette. It will stream on air, uh, online, live, and, of course, be broadcast on air statewide. If you've got questions for the candidates, send them to lpb.org slash debate. Well, the state insurance commissioner's race also heated up this week between two Republicans, one who has held the job for more than a decade and an opponent who says the state's insurance climate has greatly declined under Jim Donilon. Jim Donlan, a former state lawmaker from Metairie, has been an insurance commissioner here since 2006. He faced off against opponent Tim Temple, president of a Baton Rouge real estate company at the Press Club of Baton Rouge on Monday. How much legitimately can an insurance commissioner do to drive rates up or down? The commissioner shouldn't be focused on driving rates up and down. The commissioner needs to be focused on bringing competition to the state of Louisiana. We have very limited authority to force companies to write business at a loss in our state. Jacobs asked about uh, getting insurance companies to do business in Louisiana without legislative action. Identify companies that used to write in the state of Louisiana and no longer do. Go visit with the leadership of those companies, the president. Ask them why they left and what changes they need to, that need to be made so that they'll come back and start writing business. Most states in the Southeast Zone, because we've discussed this in Southeast Zone Commissioner meetings, have the exact same rule of, uh, rule of thumb. And I dare say, if actuaries are worth their money, then they can predict for more than six months at a time how long, uh, how, what their adequate rate need is. What are you doing to reach out to um, people of uh, various political stripes other than those that are members of the GOP? I am elected to regulate. I am not a partisan elected official. I look at my role similar to that of a judge, and I am certainly reaching out to members of the other party. Insurance is about pocketbook, not party. Last time I checked, when I renewed my insurance, there was not anywhere on the application that asked what my party affiliation was. If uh, either or both of the candidates are taking money from the insurance industry, and how do you square that with the concerns of the electorate and the business of doing the job? Indeed I am, and my opponent is as well. And just like the governor who regulates everything and takes ca ca campaign contributions from across the board interest, I'm doing so as well. Yes, I have put my own money in this. I am running for this race the first time. I haven't been commissioner of insurance for 14 years where I can pick up the phone and browbeat people to contribute to my campaign. So if, it, if someone was willing to contribute to my campaign, I don't think I would turn it down. The temptation is to ask if um, he knows what the salary is uh, and is it worth $1.1 million to, uh, to obtain. I do know what the salary is, but the money that I'm putting in this campaign, it's not to buy an office, it's not an annuity, it's not a pension I'm after, it's an investment in the state of Louisiana, it's an investment in each and every one of you here. Why do you believe that, one, naming insurance companies when they do rate reductions is a good thing, advertising for them, and two, do you truly believe that those rate reductions impact in a downward trend for every 1.5 million auto policies? Not only do I believe it, I know it to be a fact, unless the representations made by those companies to our regulators were, fraud were fraudulent. And if they are fraudulent, that's a felony, and they need to go off to jail. The Louisiana Insurance Commissioner position pays $115,000 a year. There are 20 people running to fill seven seats that are up for grabs on the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education in districts that cover the entire state. They are four-year terms and members do not get a salary, health benefits, or retirement. We sat down with some of the candidates to ask them why they're running and what they plan to do to improve Louisiana's struggling education system. I'm an educator. Mm -hmm. I want Louisiana to be the best place on earth for students to learn and for teachers to teach. 
And I believe that in my position on Bessie, I can contribute to making that happen. Holly Bofi, an incumbent from Youngsville, represents District 7. Bofi is vice president of Louisiana's Board of Elementary and Secondary Education. The former middle school teacher was named Teacher of the Year in 2010 and says the experiences she had as Teacher of the Year motivated her to run for Bessie. We are moving in the right direction, but we're not finished. We have a long way to go. We're very proud that we had um, over 80% of students graduate from high school last year. That 80% goal had been a goal for a long time, but now we're working towards 90%. I'm running for our state school board because in 1974, our constitution made a promise to the children and families of this state. They promised a public education system that was humane, a public education system that was just, and a public education system that was designed to promote excellence. East Feliciana Parish teacher and assistant principal Jonathan Lovall says it's important that the policies that Bessie puts in place are aligned with what the Constitution promises. Looking at state testing, we know um, right now in Louisiana that an eight-year-old child must spend more time taking state tests to determine if she's mastered the standards of third grade than I had to take to see if I was ready to go to graduate school. And working in a schoolhouse every day, I know firsthand that despite the hard work of our teachers, hard work of our school boards, our state school board, and our Louisiana Department of Education, too often, particularly for the most vulnerable children in our state, our children from economically disadvantaged backgrounds and our children with disabilities, our states too often not fulfilling that promise. He says he would begin by trying to help those students who need it the most. It's not nearly enough to, to, to care. It's also about knowing what policies and practices from Bessie and the Louisiana Department of Education are keeping us from fulfilling that constitutional promise. Also running hoping to win a seat at the Bessie table is Shakisha Webb Scott. I am running for a position on Bessie to have a voice to make the changes that are needed that are challenging our kids um, from day to day. During the work as the leader of Impact it's a Community School in Baker, I'm seeing the challenges and the inconsistencies that are hurting our kids. As an educator for several years and founder of a charter school, Webb Scott says over the years, children in the state have suffered even more academically because of inconsistencies and major changes in policies and practices from year to year. Well, for example, for the last five years, the curriculum has changed multiple times. The state standards have changed. If you can think back under the general administration, when something called Common Core was brought in and there was a really big uproar about it, teachers, we brought it in, teachers got trained on it, they adapted to it, then the very next year they changed it to something else, then they changed it again. And when we change what they're supposed to learn instead of building on it from year to year, is actually confusing them and delaying the learning process. Preston Castile hopes to use his strong educational background and experience as an attorney and professor as a member of Bessie. I had wonderful teachers and the education that I got in the public school system changed my life. I'm now a lawyer, but been practicing 25 years. I've been teaching law school at LSU and Southern for the last 18 years. I've been a judge and, and I've seen what's happened in the system and I understand the power of education and how it can change the lives of young people. Castile's throwing his hat in the ring in a crowded field for the District 8 seat. Castile joins Veretta Lee Tanner, former school board member in East Baton Rouge Parish, teacher Jonathan Lovall, and teacher administrator Shakisha Webb Scott, all hoping to replace Jada Lewis, who decided not to seek re-election. Castile says he'll focus on finding and supporting education policies that work. Bessie is the state's top policy-making board, and those policies have consequences. I recognize that the policies that we make can change the lives of children whether we have strong early childhood education programs, whether we start from the cradle and take kids to college and career, whether we have a comprehensive educational system or not, those choices, again, will have an impact. Castile says there's a reason Louisiana lags behind nearly every state in education. It's a combination of 
having strong policy, but also understanding the interconnection between the education system and other systems, because deep-seated poverty in this state has an impact on educational outcomes. Holly Bofi says she'll rely on her leadership experience on Bessie to move the needle. She says early intervention is key to the success of Louisiana students. She says she'll continue to push for policies that work for all children in the Bayou State. We've had to overcome um, mindsets as far as uh, where we are as a state. When we get everyone to the place of saying, not only can all children learn, but they deserve to learn, and if we have to do things differently to make that happen, then we're committed to doing it. Three members of Bessie are appointed to at-large positions by the governor and must be approved by the legislature. A reminder, Election Day is Saturday, October 12th. Well, this week, the State Workforce Commission partnered with local workforce development boards and American Job Centers to host nine state agency job recruiting events. For veterans seeking jobs in the private sector, Louisiana's only employment agency run by and for veterans is having tremendous success. I served 20 years in the United States Army. I spent the first 10 years as a mechanized infantryman, and then I transferred over and was in logistical operations and support operations for the last 10 years of my career. It's very stressful searching for work because unlike civilians, you have a termination date. Knowing when you're gonna not have a job anymore is difficult in that you want to plan and be able to transition into something immediately upon retirement, but companies, don't hire people six months out. And if you're trying to do a, a cross country move as we did, we moved from West Point, New York down to Louisiana. There's concerns with paying rent and mortgages and bills and, and everything that goes along with that. I separated from service on May 11th. I got in contact with Next Stop Vets. I believe it was in February. And I was introduced to Ben Armstrong as the regional director for Louisiana. And he helped me transfer my skills and relate my experiences in a way that was palatable to potential employers. You've been institutionalized to a way of language, to acronyms, to an understanding of how to talk about we and not me. So you've got to kind of demilitarize not only the veteran on paper, but the veteran's personality. Next Stop is the only uh, veteran uh, employment and recruitment nonprofit operating in Louisiana and across the Gulf Coast. Specifically, construction, manufacturing, and energy are the, are the sectors that we're interested in working with. Since arriving in Louisiana in late 2017, we put over 100 veterans in careers in Louisiana, uh, mainly in construction, manufacturing, and energy, from communities um, in Lake Charles, Lafayette, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, and kind of scattered out through northern Louisiana. Our average placement um, time frame from registration with Next Stop until um, you find a career is about 32 days and our average salary is $55,000 and above and in the state of Louisiana that's a fairly aggressive salary to start off with once leaving service. Attitude is 50% of the job, right? If you have the right attitude you can pick up the skills and learn the rest of it, right? You're, you're ha already halfway there. Morgan has the right attitude, right? He comes out uh, wanting to work, being here on time, you know, picking up the slack, seeing where, where problems are and trying to solve them. Right? That's the attitude that we need to have, everybody that needs to have, and that's what's going to make a successful employee, it's what's going to make a successful uh, contributor. Finding employment with L3 ASV through Next Stop Vets was instrumental in my family's ability to transition successfully and with as little stress as possible. You spend a lot of time trying to plan these moves and trying to make sure that, that your family doesn't lose any quality of life and I was able to find gainful employment with a great organization immediately upon my retirement from the service and had no gap in my earnings or my quality of life. Therefore, my family didn't have to suffer, or didn't go through any hardship during the transition. This segment is a part of American Graduate Getting to Work, a public media initiative made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. You can view this LPB segment and 14 others from public media stations in the Journey to Jobs special airing Sunday, October 6th at 11 o'clock on LPB. This week, the tributes are flowing in for Cokie Roberts. Born in New Orleans, the famed journalist, political commentator, and author died this week from breast cancer. I mean, we're, we're outside in Baton Rouge, and it's gorgeous. And I'm wearing this fabulous feather that I was given when I got here, which Mama would have just coveted. Um, and uh, she, she would 
of course, love to be here tonight, should be talking, not me. Um. Mary Martha Corinne Morrison Claiborne Boggs Roberts, better known as Cokie, was the third and youngest child of Vatican Ambassador and Louisiana's longtime Congresswoman Lindy Boggs and Congressman Hale Boggs. They understood that if there was going to be family life, that political life and family life could not be separated. And so we were included in everything. A graduate of Wellesley College with a degree in political science, Cookie served as news analyst and commentator for National Public Radio and PBS with the McNeil Lehrer News Hour and ABC and CBS News, to name a few. She held over 30 honorary degrees. In 1996, as a guest on LPB's Louisiana Legends, Cokie addressed issues of immigration. I do think that this is this experiment in the United that is the United States of America is still the greatest, uh, greatest government experiment of all time. And look, the fact that we're having an argument about immigration, just think about it. The reason we're Forever. having the argument is because people want to come here. She was cited as one of the 50 greatest women in the history of broadcasting by the American women in radio and television. In addition to her reporting, Roberts wrote six New York Times bestsellers, most dealing with the roles of women in U.S. history, including the number one bestseller, We Are Our Mother's Daughters. The Library of Congress named her a living legend. She was one of a very few Americans to attain this honor. Koki Roberts was 75. She survived by her husband, Stephen Roberts, two children, and six grandchildren. And everyone, that is our show for this week. A programming note to remind you, you can watch Louisiana Public Square next Thursday night at 8. It follows the governor's debate. The topic is calling on government leaders to address the real issues facing our state. That is next Thursday, September 26th at 8 o'clock, Louisiana Public Square. And remember, you can watch anything LPB anytime, wherever you are, with our brand new app. Download it for free from your app store. This upgraded version features news, public affairs, documentaries, how-tos, and many more programs. And please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For all of us at Louisiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Andre Morrow. And I'm Natasha Williams. Thanks for watching. Until next time, that's the state we're in. Support comes from... Entergy provides much more than power. We support science and engineering at local schools to build a brighter path to better jobs and help prepare the next generation. Because together, we power life. Entergy. Additional support provided by the Fred B. and Ruth B. Ziegler Foundation and the Ziegler Art Museum located in Jennings City Hall. The museum focuses on emerging Louisiana artists and is an historical and cultural center for Southwest Louisiana. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting with support from viewers like you.